Hey, what's up, guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. You can go. I got Instagram, Discord, Twitter. Uh, I'm doing two vi extra leak code videos on Patreon now for two bucks. You get all the access to that and the study guide I made. And it, or if you can, do, or if you join the membership on my channel, which you hit that join button, two bucks, and you get that. I'm doing that for all my Patreons memberships. Thank you guys for supporting me. Let's get in the question. Longest consecutive sequence. This is problem 128, 2,800 likes. Probably most hard problems actually get a lot of dislikes, uh, but this one gets a lot of likes because it's more like a medium problem. It's actually not that difficult. Uh, let's look into this. Given an unsorted array of integers, unsorted numbers in an array, find the length of the longest consecutive elements sequence. Okay, so consecutive elements, what are consecutive elements? Well, consecutive elements are one, two, three, four, all consecutive, all one number away from each other, right? One and three are not consecutive because what's in between them? Two. So we know that consecutive elements are elements that are one in distance away. So integers that are right next to each other in a num on a number line. Find the length of the longest consecutive se element sequence. Okay. So if we look at the example here, let's zoom in so you guys can see better. We have an unsorted array of integers. That's what it says every time, unsorted. Uh, so we see 104, 200, 132. So the answer for this problem is four. The length of the longest consecutive sequence is four because of one, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four are consecutive numbers. They're all right next to each other on a number line. One, two, three, four are all one in distance away from each other, right? They're not next to each other in the array that we're given. They don't have to be, right? They just have to be next to each other on a number line. You see there wasn't really competition here because 100, 200, they're not consecutive. These, so these are just length one. This is a one element consecutive, you know, sequence is a one element consecutive sequence. And then we have one, two, three, four. We do also have, you know, two, three, four, but that's smaller than one, two, three, four in length, right? Or we have three, four, but that's way smaller too. This does seem difficult to do in linear time complexity just because if we have to go through one element at a time, like 100, 4, 200, 1, 2, 3, 2, how are we gonna, we see four, how do we know that one, two, three, four exists later on in the array? And when, we're, when we get to one, how do we know we saw four earlier in the way, or earlier in the array? I mean, already I'm thinking about like, we're gonna have to use the data structure of some sort to get to O of N complexity, right? Because we have to keep track of things we already saw. You know, whenever you're doing a problem and you're looking at things and you have to know things before and you have to do it in linear time complexity, you're gonna have to do some kind of data structure. So that's a little tip for you there. But like I say, we always wanna start with brute force just because it's a good place to start. Sometimes brute force can lead you to that optimal solution. So let's just think about brute force. Interviewer will know that you have a clue of what's going on. But yeah, how can we do this in brute force? Well, off the bat, I'm just thinking about like, you know, O of N squared solutions are when you're, you know, have two pointers and you're like looking at different elements at a time to keep track of things. We're gonna do that in combination with another loop. So we're gonna actually have to go to O of N cubed to make sure that they're consecutive as well. The idea would kind of be like, we look at each number and then we do a loop while we increment the number by one. And then we do another loop where we look through the whole array for that number incremented by one. So you have that initial scan through the array. That's automatically what we're gonna have to do for the linear time complexity. Then you're gonna have that loop where we're incrementing the number by one over and over again. And then you're gonna have that loop that has to scan through again to find if that number incremented by one exists in the array. For example, we would go 100, 4, 200, and then we get to one, and we'd have that loop that increments by one, to, and it would say two, and then we'd have another loop that goes through the whole array from beginning to end and say, okay, is two in the array? Yep, we found two. Then we'd increment to three. Then we'd have another loop that goes through the whole array and increment to three, and then we'd increment to four, and then we'd have another loop that goes through the whole array and increments to four. You get the point. It's really, really slow, but it's a good, you know, it's good enough to show our interviewer we know something. So let's just code this out. All right, guys, so for our O of N cube solution, we're looking for the whole objective of this problem is looking for the longest consecutive sequence length, right? So what we're doing in the brute force is we're looking at all of the consecutive sequence lengths and then we're pick, gonna pick the maximum, right? So what I did is I set up a maximum sequence length variable. That's what we're gonna be returning, right? Cause we're looking for the longest consecutive sequence. You can call it longest consecutive sequence. You can call it whatever. I called it max just to show you that we're looking at all of the sequence lengths and then just taking the maximum, right? This is an O of N loop, right? Where we're looping each number one by one, 104, 200, 132. We're gonna look at each number every single time. This is an O of N loop where we're gonna increment the number one by one. And then this is an O of N loop where we look if the number plus one is in the array, right? So let's just go through an example really quick. Uh, we're looping number by one number. So we're looking at 100, right? 
Uh, we look at the current number. The sequence length is now one because we have 100, which is part of a sequence. Um, we're gonna have this while loop and we're gonna say, okay, is 100 plus one, 101 in the array? This calls this function number that exists. It looks up, does 101 exist in the array? Looks through the whole array, doesn't exist. Comes back, okay, that was false. Goes, updates the max sequence length to one because it was zero, now it's one. Okay, next number, four. We look, is, does five exist? No. 200, does 201 exist? No. Then we finally get to one. Okay, um, does, one, does one plus one exist in the array? Yes, two exists in the array. It does that whole loop. It finds two at the end. Okay, two exists in the array. Does three exist in the array? And it updates the sequence length, right? So now we have two in the sequence. Does three exist in the array? Yes. Now it updates the sequence length. Now we have three in the sequence. Does four exist in the array? Yes. Now we update the sequence. Four. And now does five? No. So it breaks out. Max sequence length gets updated to four. We keep going. The other ones have worse sequence length, so the max never gets updated again. And then we finally return the max sequence length at the end of it, right? So this is a brute force solution, O of n cube time, because we have this as a linear loop. We have this loop that is in O of n time complexity, and then that's nested in this loop. So this this O of n is nested in this O of n, which is n squared, and then this O of n is nested in this O of n, n cubed. Now let's look at how we can optimize this using a data structure, right? This is a decent solution. I mean, it shows we know what's going on and we can solve the problem. And really it's not that hard to you know, figure out. Uh, just really slow, but we can actually optimize this pretty easily. So what's a way for us to look at if a number exists that we usually often use as a method of reducing time complexity um, from linear to O of one? Well, that data structure is a hash set, guys. Hash sets, uh, you put all of the data in at the beginning, linear loop, uh, separate from nesting the loops, and now the data structure knows everything that's in the array. There is some space there, it's gonna be linear space, but we can do those lookups and check if a number exists. This whole method reduced from O of N right to O of one. So instant lookups, no time at all. So we can actually delete this method and we could add our hash set, like a num set or whatever you want to call it, hash set or whatever you want. You loop through each number, you put it into the num set, and then we can con look these up in constant time. So we would change this method call from number exists that was linear to num set dot contains current num plus one. Okay, so there we go. That's a reduction of linear time. So now we're down to O of n squared. This, this loop is still gonna be pretty crappy, but we can actually reduce the time complexity more with just a little bit of a conditional. Instead of us looking at three and then doing this loop and looking at four or looking at two and then looking at three and four, we only want to look at the sequence when we find the smallest number in the sequence, right? We're doing these unnecessary complications. If we find that one, two, three, four is the longest consecutive sequence. What is the point of us looking at three, four? What is the point of us looking at two, three, four? We want the smallest number in the sequence. That's when we wanna look at the length of the sequence and check against the maximum. So we can add a condition to check if this is the smallest number in the sequence at each step in the array. So that condition looks like this. If numset does not contain current num minus one, then we'll do the loop and look for the rest of the sequence, right? Meaning if one minus one doesn't exist in the array, so if zero isn't in the array, then we'll look for the rest of the sequence because we know it's the smallest. But for example, like three, two, or four, if three minus one is in the array, so if two is in the array, that's what this condition is saying, we're just gonna skip over this because we know there's a smaller number in the sequence. We know that two is in the array, and when we get to two, we know that one is in the array. So we don't wanna go and look for three and four and the, the higher numbers in the sequence. We wanna find the smallest number in the sequence before we do that whole loop and look through all of these things. So this reduces our time complexity to linear runtime. We have a linear space complexity as well for that hash set. But that's pretty good in a um, reduction of time complexity. I really like this problem. I think it's a really good problem. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's that hard. I guess it's one of the easiest hard ones on the site. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, I wrote um, array of I the entire time. But there you go, now it passed, sorry about that. So yeah, sorry about the array of I. I'm not, I, I don't really wanna go and film this whole thing again because of that little mess up, but 
that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, Patreon and uh, members of the channel are exclusively making you know, probably two videos a week, depending on how I want to do these videos or whatever feedback you want me to do with the drawings or whatever. Um, you can join two bucks plus the study guide, plus other stuff on my Patreon and stuff like that. So links in the description or hit the join button. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please like and subscribe because it helps my channel grow. And I hope you guys are doing good with the interviews and the quarantine and stuff like that. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know if you have other solutions um, that are cool and stuff like that. And yeah, that's it. See you in the next video. Peace.